What's important? What do you want? Thank you so much. All right, so the first thing I had asked everyone to do was take a deep breath and exhale. And take another deep breath and exhale. And let's do it one more time just to make it real clear. Okay? Now I'm going to invite you to not do anything. And I'm guessing that by about now you probably notice that you're breathing anyway. So I want to say is one of those you breathing and is the other not you breathing or are those two different you's that are breathing and in which case which you am I talking to? All right, while you think about that, let me say hello, welcome, and thanks so much for coming. I want to thank both Kenneth and Lauren who've been so helpful in putting all these together. And again, I really appreciate your suffering through the technology and getting this together. I'm going to tell you some stories today. I'm not so much a teacher as a storyteller as we all are. Some of us just tell the same story over and over again, and we don't realize that it's a story. But I'm going to tell some different stories and it's going to be up to you to decide because some of those stories are going to be true and some of them aren't. And it's going to be your opportunity or task to decide for yourself which of those stories are true. Because my first story is that my work has always been connecting with the totality. I don't know what word to use here. I like the term the Aikikami, the divine spirit of Aikido. I know some people don't like the word divine because it brings back religious stuff and whatnot. Uh, I like it. I hope you can use it. But as we pointed out, the Tao that can be spoken is not the true Tao. The word is not the, the symbol is not the thing. And we had a quote from an ancient swordmaster who said that if you hold fast to the words, you won't grasp the meaning. If we don't use words, we float about an empty space and don't attain awareness. So we'll use them the best we can. And I would just say, I've always tried to connect to that divine source. Maybe you like the force. Maybe you like the term inner teacher. I think that's probably the safest one to use. So. The first story I'll tell you is I'm here to connect with my inner teacher. As one of, the, uh, one of our students once said, I come to get all my answers questioned. And my work with you has always been in hopes that you'll connect more and more with your inner teacher. And one of my students came and said he couldn't figure out what I was doing at first and then he realized I wasn't teaching, I was learning out loud. So the other way I describe this is, for those of you who are not Aikido people, when you're studying with an individual teacher, you're called a deshi. That I was always deshi to the Aikikami. That my connection was to the Aikikami and Bob to me was senpai. He was a senior student. And I see myself not as a teacher, just as a student. Maybe I've been here longer than some of you and maybe I can be helpful. But Never surrender your connection to your inner teacher. If I say something to you and your inner teacher, your connection to the divine or the Aikikami or the totality or the force, if I say something and your inner teacher says, yeah, that sounds right, well then your inner teacher says it's right. If I say something and your inner teacher goes, I don't think so, I would say never surrender that connection to your inner teacher. Always stay true to that. And if your inner teacher goes, hey, I don't know, let me think about that. Well then please, think about it. Okay? So I'm going to go back just once more for the people who came in a little bit late and I asked everyone to take a deep breath. So if you want, let's do one more. And exhale. Okay? And then I said, if you don't do anything, I think you'll notice you're breathing. 
Now, which you is it? The you that took the breath? Or is it the you that's breathing when you're not breathing? Or you're not thinking about it? So here we get to have fun with the words. Here we get to have fun with who you are and how you think you are. And so what I want to say is that the first exercise I'd like you to do is notice that there is breathing going on and if you listen to it you'll realize that even if you try not to breathe, the you that you know yourself as, there's still an urge to breathe and it'll overtake the you that you think you are or the way you know yourself and it will force you to breathe. And so we find ourselves trying to catch our breath sometimes or our breath stops or and what I want to direct your attention to is listening to the impulse to breathe. And the first exercise is trying to breathe in perfect harmony with that impulse. Feeling how fast it would like you to breathe, how deeply, whether it wants to hold or release or intensify and to bring your conscious attention into connection with that impulse to breathe. And I call that the extraordinary listening breath. Just listening at an extraordinary level to that impulse that breathes you. And that is your communication from the spirit or the divine or the force or the totality. All right, so this impulse to breathe is something that most of us lose touch with. And as soon as you start to pay attention to it and listen to it, you automatically connect your attention with your experience. And as such, you begin to create a unified field in your own being. And then I want to take you one step further. As you listen to the impulse to breathe, and I want to make the distinction between listening to it, not simply paying attention to it and hearing it, but unifying with it, listening to it. And the distinction I make is that, you know, there were a lot of things my parents told me, I heard them, I just didn't listen. Okay, so listening to the impulse to breathe. And like I said, if this was the only thing, if I could only teach you one thing, this would be the way I would connect you with your inner teacher with your spirit, with your divine source, with the Aikikami, with the totality of the universe. This is the doorway in. So it starts by listening to the impulse to breathe and then the secondary step would be seeking the source of the impulse to breathe. Where is that impulse coming from? And I guess initially all these things become a question in the head. But as you start to pay attention, it becomes an experiential thing. And it's why our Aikido practice was so valuable because you were doing it in the physical and you were getting feedback in the physical dimension. All right, now let's play a little game with that now. And as I'm talking to you, again, as much as you can, stay with that practice. And in the beginning, we kind of go back and forth a little like you learn to play the piano one hand and then the other, and then eventually you put them together and that's what makes the beauty of the music. Bringing the attention to connect with the experience. Bringing the volition to connect with the universal. Unifying the individual with the divine, harmonizing yourself the way you know yourself with the universe, your original self. So this is an exercise, it's not abstract, although in the beginning it's an idea, but as you start to experience it, and then my guess is, and you tell me if I'm wrong here, if you've been playing with this exercise, something's already starting to shift in the way you feel. And that's so important to us that 
when we say how are you it's implied that we're saying how are you feeling we're not usually saying how are you thinking and even when we say how are you doing it means how are you doing in terms of how you're feeling and that's what we lose attention to and that's why our life becomes disassociated from the essence of who we are and that's where we lose our ability to complete our bestowed mission so again this is a story you play with it you tell me if it's true I want to come back to what's important it was a question I asked when we started and I'm wondering what came up for you and I don't want to argue with anyone because whatever you thought is of course right for you but I wonder how many of you thought well my breathing is important and yet two three minutes without it and you're basically dead and yet we pay so little attention to our breathing unless you happen to be a pranayama yogi chances are you don't think about it that much maybe you've done something where you've taken a class and learned a little bit about it but I'm just offering you the sense that there's probably little you could pay attention to that would make a bigger shift in your life than the quality of your breath because as you breathe so shall you live so this bringing your conscious attention into harmony with the should we call it subconscious should we call it the collective unconscious should we call it the divine force that actually activates our lives I think is the most important thing you can do now I don't know what you want I don't know what's important to you I don't know how you answered that question and if you're taking notes I would say keep taking notes as you think about these things because I'm hoping that we'll take a little time at the end and everyone will get a chance to share if you'd like to I know some of this you'd rather keep personal no problem so now I want to play with the breath in a slightly different way again I call this the extraordinary listening breath when you listen to the impulse to breathe when you that you know and the you that's that unknown deeper aspect of self start to unify by connecting your attention with the experience of the impulse to breathe by listening to it by actually doing what it tells you now at one point and just catch it when it happens almost no matter what you do you're going to have the impulse to breathe in and it will take you to a certain degree of inhalation and what I'd like you to do now is add your volition to that in breath and catch any of the next couple that come by and as it starts to breathe in and you start to breathe in with it I want you to by your intention take that breath all the way to the top and hold it there for just a second and then all you have to do is let go and release and it starts to breathe out now I want to highlight again never lose touch with your inner teacher never do anything that feels wrong to you don't breathe harder or softer or hold your breath more don't do any of that we're going to do some physical exercises in a minute don't do any of them in any way that's uncomfortable for you everything we do should be enjoyable and even when we stretch and stuff it should only be to the point where it feels good to you so when I ask you to hold your breath stay with your inner teacher I'm just suggesting these things I'm not telling you what to do and even if I was if I were you I wouldn't listen to me unless my inner teacher said that sounds like fun let's do that so if you'll catch the next impulse on the in breath and add to it and stay with it and then kind of with your volition take it all the way to the very top where the diaphragm is extended as down as low as it can go and is drawn air into the lungs until there's virtually no more room don't force just you know 80 percent and that's you breathing it and if you release it will breathe you and it will start to breathe out and if you'll join your volition with that and take the out breath all the way out so that the 
diaphragm can release completely and come all the way up, it will force most of the air out. I'd say, again, 80%. And then if you let go, the diaphragm will start to release and come in and it will draw the breath in. And if you'll follow it and add your volition to it, take it all the way to the top of the breath. You breathe it. Hold it there for just a second. Kind of enjoy it. And then if you'll release, it will breathe you. Is anybody lost? Are we doing okay? Am I making sense? So I call this the Aiki dance breath. That's where you breathe it, it breathes you. And there's an exchange between you and that universal force. You're not completely surrendering to it. You're surrendering to it some and you're bringing yourself to it. And the you that you know and this unknown you start to dance together. Okay, someone says, I'm lost. Let me ask, are you having difficulty feeling the impulse to breathe? Is that okay? And go ahead and unmute your mic and talk to me for a minute. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, could you listen to the impulse to breathe? Did that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, so... Then what I'm playing with is adding to that impulse. As, it's, as if you just exhale and then let go, the breath automatically starts to come in. You don't have to do anything, right? But if you would then at that point join with the breath coming in and by your volition, by your intention, go ahead and make that breath continue coming in until there's really no more room. Breathe all the way in. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And then if you hold it, th hold it there for just a second, then if you release, you don't have to do anything but just let go and the breath starts to go out. That's it breathing you. Does that make sense? Yes. And if you'll keep breathing out with it, join with it and then kind of make it breathe, just follow the breath out until you can't breathe out anymore and you do that by your volition, that's you breathing it. So, let me check, are you still with me? Yes. Do you feel like your question's been answered or would you like me to go further with it? Which, which one do you want me to do? The, it breathing me or... You breathing it. Yeah. The f <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for, for raising the question. So the first breath that I taught you, shared with you, the extraordinary listening breath, I'm just listening. I'm doing exactly what it wants me to do and I'm not adding any volition to it. This second breath, what I call the Aiki dance breath, is a combination of both. One at a time, you listen to it, you let go and it breathes you, and then you add your volition until you go to the end of that cycle, whether it's the in-breath or the out-breath. And then when you breathe as far in as you can, if you let go, it breathes you. And if you'll join with it and add your volition until you breathe all the air out, that's you breathing it. So I want you to do both. Does that kind of make sense yet? Yes. Thank you for asking. And stop me again if I lose you because I'm only here to share this with you. I already know it myself. All right, so I want you to play with when the breath starts to breathe in, see if you can stay with it and take it all the way to the top of the breath cycle. And then when it's comfortable, when you feel like you're there, don't go any further than you're comfortable and it feels right, and maybe you want to hold it for a second, or maybe you don't, release and let that natural breath take over and join with it and add your volition to it and try and breathe all the way out, no further than is comfortable for you. And when you get to the bottom, maybe you want to stay there for a second. And then I just notice mine starting to breathe in again, so I join with it. But instead of going three quarters of the way where I might naturally stop, I'm gonna go all the way in, all the way out. So let me stop here once more, make sure we're all okay. So the Aiki dance breath is you breathe it, it breathes you, and you start to dance with this two aspects of yourself because um, is the breath through the nose or the mouth? Uh, 
you know, I generally tend to prefer to breathe through my nose, but I don't know that I would say either one is right. I would say listen to your own inner teacher at any given moment. You may choose to breathe through the nose or through the mouth more. I know there are lots of yogic treatises on what happens in the different breathing through the nose and through the mouth. But I'd say for the moment, whichever one is most comfortable for you, at whatever pace is most comfortable for you. And I like to stretch it a little bit, but like I say, never too much. It should never be uncomfortable. You should never feel any kind of um, resistance to the point where you feel like anything's other than enjoyable for you. So let's just say I'm going to wait for a second while my next in-breath shows up. Here it comes. I can feel it starting. So I'm going to take it all the way to the top, and again, however far near the top is comfortable. And I'm going to hold it for just a second because it feels good. And then I'm just going to let go, and it starts to breathe out without me doing anything. It naturally does, and I'm going to join with it, and I'm going to continue to breathe out intentionally until I get to the bottom. And I'm going to stay there for just a second, and it feels a little uncomfortable, so I'm going to let go and it's starting to breathe me in again. Now, I think on one level a lot of people would not understand what the value of this is or why it's so important. But l let me leave it for the moment and if we do stay for a chat session we can talk more about this and, and get more into your questions. But let me say that these two aspects of yourself were you did the initial breath and then you realize that something was breathing you. Uh, now we're going to play with the words a little bit. Those are both you. They're aspects of the self. And it's very easy for the aspects of thinking and feeling, of breathing and volition, of uh, these aspects to disassociate. And that's when you say something like, Jesus, I'm really feeling out of sorts. There was one of the great videos. We got a lot of videos of Bob up on the YouTube channel. And I remember the night that I shot it. And we walked off the mat and Bob goes, God, I don't, I don't know if there was anything there tonight. And I swear to my mind, it was one of the best videos we ever took. And at the time, I didn't know it until I got it home and started editing. And it was the one, and I'm, I meant to go look for it. I just didn't get time. And I, I will maybe try and send out the, the link to it or something. But he starts out and he goes, um, God, you know, some days you just, you just can kind of barely get through it. You're really out of sorts. And, and, then, and then, you know, some days it's, it's not so bad. And, th and then there are those days, he said, well, for whatever reason, it's like, God, why can't every day be like that? And then he said, you know, I realized somewhere along the line that that just happens to us, like uh, the old uh, Ben Franklin comment, even a clock that doesn't run is right twice a day. And I would say even, even someone who has no spiritual practice, as they become m more amped up and more tired, they pass through center. And there's a moment when all of a sudden, all the forces in your being start to align. And at those moments, the key flows through like magic. God, why can't every day be like that? Well, these two exercises are the strongest, most powerful tools that I have. And I share them with you, and whether or not this is true or not, you'll have to find out for yourself. For those moments when I'm having trouble being creative in a particular situation, and I use creativity to mean coming up with a solution that seems to solve the problem. And the problem might be, how do I write this piece? Uh, the problem might be, how do I get along with somebody? The problem might be, how do I have a better conversation? The problem might be, how do I enjoy myself a little bit more? The problem might be, how do I deal with my anger or this idiot that I'm dealing with? It doesn't matter. All this is going on in terms of my energy and the aspects of myself come together and they're listening to each other and they're dancing in harmony with each other and they're working as a unified field and there's another term I'll use 
frequently. Uh, disassociated versus unified, this unified field. All of a sudden, God, why can't every day be like that? And the way that I find is the simplest, the easiest, uh, doesn't cost anything, you can do it anytime, anywhere, and usually it's pretty quick. I'd say within 10 breaths, and you rarely will get to 10, but this is a story, you tell me if it's true, that you do this practice of listening to the impulse to breathe, and then you do the practice of playing with you breathe it, it breathes you, and connecting yourself in those two ways. And come back to me in a week, or email me anytime, or talk to me right now. Are we making sense? How are we doing? Are we good? All right, I hope you're finding this, you know, something you can take and play with. And as you play with it, you may go, well, you know, that wasn't that valuable for me. Well, it may not be. Uh, I don't imagine that, but, but your inner teacher, not mine. And like I say, don't abandon your inner teacher. It doesn't matter how many dons I have, okay? It doesn't matter how long I've been doing this. What's true for you is what's important for you. Peaceful reconciliation begins at home for you to accomplish your bestowed mission. I always say, one of my greatest fears is getting to the end of my life and finding out it was someone else's. There are so many forces pulling at you and you start, take birth and everyone's telling you, they give you a name, they tell you what they think of you, they tell you how you should behave. I'm sorry, can I run through the I'm not sure why I'm not seeing the, let me see if I can get that. Thanks for your patience here. Okay, so the first stage of the breathing is noticing that you can breathe, but most of the time you aren't the you that you know yourself as, but you're always breathing. So when you stop, you know, take a couple breaths to make real clear, this is me breathing. And then you just stop breathing. Don't hold against it or anything. Just don't do anything. You'll notice that something is breathing the known self. Something is breathing you, as it were. Now, the words are funny because that's really the you that's doing the breathing also. So who, which you are we talking about? Because those sensei said, he who understands the secret of Aikido has the universe within himself to say, I am the universe. So that is you breathing. But for our words and distinctions, that's impulse to breathe is the way I talk about it at first. And, and there's an impulse that's breathing you. And if you listen to it, it will tell you something. It will tell you how to breathe. Nose or mouth, slow or fast, deep or shallow. Hold the breath, don't hold the breath. If you just listen, and if this is new to you, it may seem a bit subtle. But I guarantee you, a couple days of playing with it for, for five minutes, 10 minutes, you're practically a black belt. It just is so simple, it's so fundamental. And once you catch that feeling, it's so essential to you becoming who you are, to you manifesting in the most natural, creative, authentic, spontaneous way. Because as I was saying, there's so many forces telling you how to be. So I'm going to come back to that. I just want to go once more and say, the second one, after just listening to the breath itself, was adding your volition. So when it starts to tell you to breathe in, let's say 60%, you still breathe in to the top and don't force it. So 80, 90%, if you get to 100% without straining, that's fine, but no straining, okay? When you breathe out, the same thing. And when you decide to hold your breath, and I hope we can get back to that for a minute, uh, holding the breath is also a very powerful tool, but you always want to do it in a state where you're not forcing or fighting. So whoever, uh, I can't quite read it, I don't have my glasses, but whoever asked the question, are we good? 
go ahead and unmute and tell me what you'd like to hear from me at this point or if, if we're ready to go on. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So the extraordinary listening breath, simply listening to the impulse to breathe, second phase, seeking the source, sensing into where that impulse is coming from and where begins like a location in a physical sense. It's, it's a spiritual sense, but start with the physical. Where in your body do you feel it? And then the second one is the Aiki dance breath. If you breathe it, it breathes you. Let go to it breathing and then add to it until you reach the end of the cycle. Let go, let it breathe you and add to it until you reach the end of that cycle. So if we're in sync there, I want to come back and say there's so many forces that are telling you how you should be, what you should believe, uh, what God is, uh, how you should write, you should be quiet, you shouldn't, whatever. And um, they start on you before you have any volition whatsoever. You have no sense of what's going on and you have no ability to defend yourself against any of that, let alone know what it is of it that you should be listening to and should be defending yourself against. So we get shaped and formed into these identities and then they become kind of comfortable and we get sort of stuck in them. And playing with the breath here is one of the things that softens those edges and begins to allow you to experience yourself in new ways. So I'd like to take you into now couple more minutes of breathing and then I want to get into some movement. The three cycles of breath that we're used to is in breath, out breath and hold. You can hold at the top, you can hold at the bottom. When you hold at the top it lets the energy circulate. When you hold at the bottom it stimulates an absorption into the cellular level. So let's do a couple of slow easy deep breaths and I'm going to ask you, if you breathe in, notice where you feel the breath is going at a cellular level. So we call external breathing the breath going in and out of the lungs. Once it goes into the bloodstream, you may notice that, oh, I can feel it glowing or I can feel myself oxygenating, you know, in my torso or I can feel it in the thighs but not in the shins. So as you start to play with that, And right now, just notice. Don't try and get to the places that don't work or just enjoy whatever you're enjoying. And if you notice there are areas that you're not really feeling that glow, just notice it because the system will produce its own intelligence there. So I'm going to run through a couple thoughts really quickly today. If you come back and join me, we'll try and go into the ones that you would like help with or are most interested in or whatever we want to come back to in one of the next classes. At the first level of breath, there's just breath going in and out, whether it's through the nose or through the mouth. If you get it fast enough, you can hear it. Everybody clear on that one? Do a breath in through the nose or the mouth. You can hear it. Okay? You can hear it. As you start to slow the breath slightly, you can hear it, but it's softer. If you slow it a little bit more, you can't hear it anymore, but you can feel it. Now, is everybody with me? Let me know if we're, everybody can tell the difference between what I call the audible breath and the silent breath. And generally, it's just a matter of slowing it down. Or you can feel it, but you can't hear it. And let me just ask if there's anyone who can't get to the silent breath, take an extra minute because a couple good audible breaths helps you oxygenate, which is the first lesson of yoga and 3Z lessons. Oxygenate, activate, appreciate. So we've been working completely on oxygenation, but we're also dealing with this oxygenation beyond just breathing in and out of the lungs, but also as the oxygen starts to assimilate or absorb into the cells themselves and then that produces life 
itself or it oxygenates life itself. That's where the process really starts to vitalize your experience. That's where you start to feel better. The Dalai Lama said we all have something in common. Everybody wants to feel better. Nobody wants to feel worse. And then I'd take that one more notch. Our friend Paul Ehrlich, longtime friend, longtime student, died about 10 years back. He was a drug counselor and alcohol addiction counselor. And he said we used to tell our patients, you know, if you quit drinking, you'll feel better. You know, you'll feel pain better. You'll feel pleasure better. You'll feel better. This sense of paying attention to feeling is so fundamental. And again, it's one of the things that they sort of teach us not to do. Stop laughing. Shut up. Don't feel bad. Oh, don't cry. And allowing ourselves to have this experiential process is not something we're terribly supported in. And so I want to encourage you to listen to your inner teacher. Support yourself in accomplishing your bestowed mission. When you feel your grief, you heal your grief. When you feel your joy, you share your joy. So this sense of connecting in and using the breath as a simple tool. If we go a little further from the audible breath to the silent breath, is everybody with me? And I would say if you're not, go ahead and unmute your microphone. And let me know if you have a question because I want to take you to a third level here. But if you've oxygenated enough, you can begin to slow your breath so it's so delicate that you not only don't hear it, you don't feel it. You know you're breathing because you can feel your lungs expand. And actually you begin to feel the absorption at a cellular level much more intensely. And then I call that the invisible breath. Where you can't hear it, it's so soft, you can't even feel it. And it gets a little questionable in there because what I really want to start to invite you to do between now and the next class is play with the borders. Play with the borders where audible becomes silent and silent becomes invisible. And I'm just going to take a minute here and let you play with that just for a, a sense of being clear on what it is I'm inviting you to take home as a practice. We're not going to spend a lot of more time on it right now. All right. So if you're okay, if you're not, go ahead and unmute your mic and let me know. If we're good with this and you think you've got something you can work on between now and whenever you want to stop working on it or the next time we see each other, I'd like to do one more quick breathing exercise and then I want to take us into a little bit of movement. We'll do more movement next week, but I just wanted to introduce this because to me what's important is the breath and this sense of who you really are in relationship to these, shall we call it, two aspects of the you breathing it and it breathing you because the it is really who you really are. And when that manifests, you accomplish your bestowed mission, you naturally become your authentic self. So I'm hearing no questions. I'm hoping we're good to go. I do see one. Uh, what is it? Go ahead, unmute your mic and, and uh, ask it. Hi. Uh, so I feel a little weird, slightly dizzy, not necessarily bad, but all weird. Weird. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say, say a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if that's the right direction or not. I would say that when you start to let go of how you know yourself and you start to experience a deeper or more unified or more complete aspect of yourself, that it probably won't feel the same. And certainly when you start oxygenating at a level like this, one of the things that starts to happen is the release of toxins is a little bit greater and it can make you dizzy. Also, you can get the 
oxygen high and that can make you a little bit dizzy. And I would say there's no problem with that. If it feels at all uncomfortable, just go back to your normal breathing and let your, your breath take over as it were and go back to kind of a shallower, more comfortable and more normal breath. And when you're ready, play with it a little bit. Uh, don't ever push yourself beyond what you feel like you want to play with. Does that work enough? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to worry about, it's sort of like when we stretch a little bit, it can, it can feel a little awkward here or not so comfortable. Uh, don't go further than is reasonable to you, but making yourself uncomfortable is how you keep or, or increase your range of motion. By lifting weights, that's how you strengthen your, your muscles. So we want to play with things that aren't exactly comfortable. But we don't want to be uncomfortable to a point where we're in any way uh, damaging our tissue, where we're in any way scaring ourselves so that we start to resist what's going on. And inevitably, for most of us, when we start breathing, uh, if, especially if you haven't done much of it, both the higher levels of oxygen will, will be a little bit dizzy-ish. And um, especially if you've played with the, you know, all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, and the release of toxins will also produce a kind of dizzying feeling. The other thing I would suggest is that when you do these kinds of exercises, increase your liquid intake. Okay? So I want to do one more quick thing, then I want to do a little motion, and then I want to give you all a chance to talk if you have anything to say. And the, I want to go back to, we did the invisible breath, we did the silent breath, we did the audible breath, and there's one more piece I'm going to call the resistance breath. And that's where you breathe in so fast and you may not want to do that at this moment. Uh, may want to take it easy if you're starting to feel over oxygenated. But where you start to breathe in so it's, you can't breathe any more or any faster. And I'm going to do one through the mouth. And then I'm going to breathe out just as fast as I can. The channel when it's open allows that. If we start to shrink the channel a little bit, then ha, ah, it starts to make sound. And that's literally what we do when we chant or sing. So let me invite you to just start to breathe out with a slightly constricting your throat until you feel it making a little sound. Now, if you've been told to be quiet and not make noise in public, you may feel a little funny doing this, but your mic is muted, so don't worry. And just and if you tighten it a little more, the pitch will go up. And I think I'll, I'll stay there for a moment and say, if you want to play with that a little bit and you want to come back to me next week, let's talk about that. See what you get in the way of questions and we'll work with it. But because we've gone longer uh, based on the problems we had getting started. I'd like to take you into a little bit of movement, okay? If you're of a mind, I'd invite you to do this standing. If you'd rather, you can do it sitting. So whatever works best for you, I'm going to stand up here. And I'm going to invite you to just lean forward a little bit. And this is a Marin term. Heighten your sensory acuity. Pay attention to your experience is what I'm saying. Feel it at a subtler, more sensitive level. And then come back to your wherever, where you're not leaning. And the question I have for you, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is how do you know you're there? Very carefully, just a little bit. Don't lose your balance. Don't even get close to losing your balance, but lean back a little bit until it's distinctly you're leaning back. And notice how that feels. And notice what changes as you slowly come forward until you're not leaning. How do you know you're there? What are the experiential signals to you that tell you that you're wherever you want to call this? Okay? Let's do it once more forward. And come back to, what should we call it? I'll call it normal for a minute. 
and then once more backward just a little bit and then come forward a little bit until you feel like you're not leaning and look for the signals all right and now I'd like you to lean forward just the teeniest little bit just enough so you know oh this is forward and then come back to should we call it balance? Should we use that word for the moment? And then back, just the littlest bit. To, as soon as you know you're leaning back, stop there and just feel that. And come back to center. Okay, and notice what happens. And now I'd like you to come once more, just minutely forward, until you can feel that this is no longer balance and then let yourself come back into balance and notice the difference in feeling and now minutely back just the littlest bit until you go oh, that, that's no longer balanced anymore that's off balance notice how that feels to you what are the signals that you get then come back to balance again okay I'm going to do one more now. I'd like you to get quote unquote balanced. And I'd like you to just get ready to lean forward. Think about leaning forward, but don't move your physical body, but move your, if you will, move your mind forward, but don't move the physical. Keep the physical in balance. And then come back to just unifying the mind and body. And then Think about leaning back just a little bit without moving the physical and then release that to being simply present in the moment. And do that again forward, just thinking about it and what happens when you do that and what happens when you now release it and let your mind and body balance or unify or center or align and back just a little bit in thought only, not moving the physical, and come back into center. All right, so I just like to say, are we okay with this? Is everybody with me? Can you feel something? And are, can you kind of hold the talk? Because I want to do one quick introduction to some movement, and then I'd like to sit and chat for a few minutes as long as you'd like to stay and do that. If we're okay with that, I'm going to do this then. Um, we're going to go into the theater games right now, okay? You're just waking up from sleep. And you're kind of yawning. and uh, You know the way you stretch when you do that? Yeah, okay, like that, okay? Now, just keep doing that movement for a minute. Whatever feels good to you. Not too much, and... This is the beginning of our Aiki dance movement. And now if you could imagine someone's strike coming right from my head and I'm just doing my movement here and we could do an Arimi Nage if we wanted to. Or move with them in this way or that way or this way or that way, okay? And next week we'll do it with some music or something like that. But I feel like uh, we've run a little past our time, and I did want to get some time to talk with you. I know this is kind of fun. Oh, let's do one more minute. Let's do one more minute. Just let go to, I call this the extraordinary listening movement. How does your body feel like it would like to stretch or move, or what would be fun? And I, I bring in an imaginary uke from time to time, and... And sometimes I'm just dancing. I don't have to worry about martial arts or any of that stuff. And I'm just allowing myself to move because this movement starts to unify the mind and body in a way that it's very important that the body be part of the game. And I like the freestyle movement, but uh, Michael, who I believe is still with us, has a beautiful tape called Meditation in Motion on YouTube at the Ashland, the uh, Aikido of Ashland site. And you can watch it. And he teaches all the Aikido techniques 
just doing them solo. And I like to play with that. I, I'm more into uh, freestyle movement, so my ukes never attack in classic Aikido form. They're always doing weird, weird stuff. And the last thing I'll say is the yoga and three lessons oxygenate, activate. And the last piece we didn't touch on, which is appreciate, which is just enjoying. And joy is the greatest treasure. Enjoying what happens when you play with your breath like that. What happens when you do these movements and how you feel in doing it. So my meditation microdosing is align, allow, whatever that is, movement or feeling, and appreciate what's going on for you. All right, I think I've given you more than enough to play with uh, for the rest of your life. It's certainly working for me. Certainly we're, we're playing with waking up, even if we think we're awake. But that's, that's, a, that's a good place to look at. Again, for me, like I said, the transition between the silent breath and the invisible breath, or the audible breath and the silent breath, the transition between waking and sleeping, the transitions between stillness and movement, the transitions between it breathes you and you breathe it, you're still listening to the impulse to breathe while we're hanging out. We're headed towards developing a state of awareness where we can tell, where we have developed the sensory awareness to know when we've diverged from our own bestowed mission, when we're no longer authentically ourselves. I like to tell the story of you come out of a movie, you can't believe anyone would bother to make that movie, and the person you're with, before you can say anything, says, God, wasn't that a great movie? And it's your sensei, or it's your boss, or it's your date and they're really cute, or whatever it is. And how do you deal with that discrepancy in who you are at that moment? Do you tell them they're wrong? Do you hide who you are? What goes on at that moment? So that ability to find a way to be authentic in that moment is a certain part of what we're looking for. How do we manage to negotiate this world where there's so much potential conflict. And that's certainly a major piece. The other piece is we're entering into the unknown. We don't know what we're going to find, so we don't know what it's going to bring us. But it is that sense of waking up from maya, from walking in our sleep, to an enlightened or uh, sunyata, the glow of the pure awareness. And um, you can lean towards either side, whichever is important for you. But I want to say the known aspect or the conscious aspect or the part of yourself that you're used to and the part of yourself that it calls on you. But for a lot of us, we've learned to disconnect with that or repress it or judge it or something like that. And so I'm playing with kind of allowing ourselves to experience, you know, amongst friends in safe rooms. Uh, Maybe we need mats on the floor to make it, you know, padded rooms, um, where we can start to play with things that we're not that familiar with, and hopefully in a way that's safe and respectful, and yet stretch our, through our physical stretching exercises, increase our range of motion, and by uh, isometrically increasing our strength, we can do that to our spirit and our emotional self as well. I, I think that you find that the ability to do the, the external breathing, everybody can do that. The internal breathing is something that is a much more subtle aspect. And as you start to tune into it, as you start to pay attention to it, something changes in, in your being. I think I used the expression, I mean the um, description when, when we were in New Zealand. I said, uh, you know, if I asked any of you to slow your heartbeat, m most of you would look at me like, what was I talking about? But if I asked any of you to slow your breath, everybody would know exactly how to do that. And if you start by slowing your breath, three or four or five, maybe 10 <laughs> breaths in, you'll find that your heartbeat is slowing. And now after this many years of study, I can actually tune into my heartbeat enough that I can't always do it. There are certainly times when I get a racing heart that I, I just need to live with it and, and do the extraordinary listening heartbeat. But most of the time, if I choose to, I can actually slow my heartbeat like I can slow my breath. Not as completely, not as uh, effectively. But I begin to be able to just feel into my heartbeat and soften that whole feeling. 
And I think so as we move from the simpler dimensions, and that's what I've been trying to show you today, just the most tangible pieces of the breath, then we can start to move towards the subtler pieces. As we start to move with the tangible pieces of moving the physical and whatnot, we can start to move towards subtler aspects of beginning to release our musculature in ways that allows all the um, arteries to open and the heart to be softened a little bit. And we'll, we'll play with that as we get to it, but I hope that's of some, some, I mean, I'm just offering you things to play with. I hope I'm not, I don't come across if I'm telling you what you should be doing. I'm just saying these are things that have been really fun, as I would say, but helpful to me because um, Bob and I have talked about this a lot. You know, I was one of those people who I really had to study yoga or Aikido or something. I could hardly stand the energy that, that was in my system, but a lot of that was because I didn't know how to, and these arts have given me a place where the energy, instead of making me angry now, just becomes an empowering force. Or instead of making me nervous, or whatever the after effects are, I just kind of go to the energy in another way. So these are things I hope you're playing with. Oh, Sensei said, you know, my students think I don't lose my center, but that's not true. I just recognize it sooner and I get back quicker. But it's a question of you starting to recognize when you're losing your balance with yourself psychically, emotionally, spiritually, if we can use that term that way. When you feel like you've lost your authenticity or you're off track with your bestowed mission, that's what I think really, like the slow your breath, eventually slow your heartbeat, you start to get finer and finer dimensions of this awareness. And you start to know when you're in line with what's right for you. And I'm sure you've all had experiences where You've let something go too long and you realize you should have done something or said something sooner. And that's all we're playing with. And this sensitivity and this awareness should give us that ability. Let me then ask you just quickly, are we good? Does everyone feel like you understood enough to take something or you got something you can play with? Because my feeling is, is it's really um, what you do with it that will teach you how to make it valuable to you. And it may already be, I don't know. It's been so powerful for me in my life. Particularly want to thank Lauren and especially Kenneth who does the technical stuff that makes this possible. These two gentlemen have really done a lot to make all this possible for all of us.